Well, good morning again. I am so excited for this part of the service. It's been a great day already, but to get to celebrate these graduates, their accomplishments, I'm really looking forward to that part of that. Let me start off by saying, typically on a graduation Sunday, the student pastor would be up here talking about the students and what they mean to him and everything else. And um, I need you to know that I'm selfish. And um, I didn't let him. Um, he, he's newer, and so he, you know, he's okay with it this time. Next year, I'm not going to be able to pull this off. But uh, most of these students I've spent a lot of time with over the last couple of years uh, through transitions, getting to know them, connecting with them. And so um, I said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. So he was like, that's cool. That's cool. So yeah, so he's up here. He's going to help out. But um, it's Joshua Village, if you haven't met him, by the way. He's our student pastor. But I'm so excited for uh, what's about to take place and uh, what God's going to do here today. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started recognizing our graduates. Well, uh, we're going to talk about them and what they've done. I'm going to bring them up here on stage and stand next to me. And so we can embarrass them extra much today because nothing says love like embarrassment. And so that's what we're going to do. So uh, we'll start off with our first graduate, Joshua Matthew Hargrove. If you'll come up these stairs here. Yeah, come on this side. Yeah, perfect, perfect. All right. You just stand right here and... Josh is a son of Mike and Tina Hargrove. Yesterday, he graduated from LaGrange College, cum laude, with honors in nursing. Josh has accepted a job at Shepherd Center in Atlanta, working in the acquired brain injury floor. While at LaGrange College, Josh played goalie and was captain of the lacrosse team for two years. Josh was also part of our Connect group, life group for three years and led the group this past year. Uh, Josh also inspired the logo for our Connect group, Bozos for Jesus. Um, so we're excited for him. Josh, your parents have selected this verse for you. Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. This is a life verse they chose for you when you were dedicated as a baby to the Lord and his church. And it remains such an applicable verse for you as you move forward in your life. And as you make this transition, your parents have these words for you. Josh, you are a special young man. And your mom and dad and entire family are so very proud of you. You light up the world around you. And it's very apparent to all you meet that the Holy Spirit is strong within you. You've worked hard to overcome so many obstacles in your life. And you've never once quit on yourself or your faith. Stay true to who you are and continue to show the world the Christ whom you love. And you'll be prepared to overcome the trials and tribulations life throws your way. Congratulations, it's been pure joyous parents to watch you grow and engage in your life. However, all of these many accomplishments and contributions, we are most excited to see the work Christ is doing through you in your life and the lives of those around you. Eternally, eternally impacting God's kingdom. Well done, faithful servant. We love you. Joshua Matthew Hargrove. Good job, buddy. Our next graduate is Dejan Lamar Weaver. All right. Dejan is the son of Dion Weaver and Latasha Grant. Yesterday, he graduated from LaGrange College with a degree in exercise science. Dejan will pursue a master's in sports medicine and plans on becoming a physical therapist, which I'll be calling you a lot when I'm older because I'm already breaking. You know that, right? <laughs> All right. I'm <clears throat> good. While at LaGrange College, Dejan was a member of the football team. Dejan was also part of our Connect Life group for two years and regularly attended worship with us here at Southcrest. You know, college students have this tendency to travel in packs. And so if one's going to church, they all go to church. But if one doesn't come to church, they all stay home that day. But this isn't the case with Dejan. The very first time I met Dejan, he came walking through those doors all by himself, walked into the church and said, I'm here. And I tell you, you won't find that kind of commitment and dedication in someone so young. I was a college student saying, I'm coming to church on my own, whether anyone comes with me or not. Now, since then, he's met a lot of people, and now he has a lot of friends here too, but it was a blessing to watch him come in, and he's inspired me in what it means to, to grow in Christ and be strong in your faith. Dejan, your mother selected this verse for you. Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern that it's the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. As you make this transition in your life, your mother has these words for you. You have always made me so proud through your drive and determination. Continue to walk in his light and follow the path laid before you. You are an exceptional young man destined to do great things. We love you and support you now and forever. 
Dejan Lamar Weaver. Congratulations, buddy. Proud of you, man. Our next graduate is starting with our high schoolers now is Samantha Jane Carr. Samantha, if you'll come on up here. Very good. <laughs> she loves being in front of people, absolutely. <laughs> Samantha is a daughter of Mike and Debbie Carr. She's a homeschool graduate and will be attending Point University this fall where she has received an academic and honor scholarship. Congratulations. During high school, Samantha was a member of 4-H. She was a student youth leader of their praise team at our church in Florida, and she attends Southcrest students here on Wednesday nights. She was a Florida State dog champion in 2020. She's very active with the Kennel Club and has put many titles on her dogs in obedience, agility, rally, and confirmation. Hey, on that obedience piece, can you help me with the middle schoolers? <laughs> That'd be great. All right, thanks. Um, she continues to be active with the American Kennel Club, and just stay tuned. You may see her at Westminster one day. Samantha, your parents have chosen this verse for you. Proverbs 4, 23. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. As you make this transition in your life, your parents have these words for you. Remember that you are a beautiful gift from God, loving and talented. As you enter this new chapter of life, seek God and trust your heart. Remember your special talent as a dog whisperer. Samantha Jane Carr. Congratulations, Samantha. Good job. David Bishop Cook. Oh, yeah. All right. Bishop, calm down. Calm down. Okay. okay. <laughs> Bishop is the son of Donnie and Jennifer Cook. He's a homeschool graduate and will be attending Mississippi College in the fall, majoring in business and film. As part of high school education, Bishop also took dual enrollment classes at LaGrange College. During high school, Bishop was a member of the speech and debate team. He also serves on our worship team here at South Coast, playing the keys on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights for our students. Last year, Bishop received a freshman English award from LaGrange College as a dual enrollment student. Bishop has also received a Chick-fil-A leadership scholarship. Bishop, your parents have selected these verses for you. 1 Timothy 4.12. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. And as you make this transition, your parents have these words for you. Bishop, we are so proud of the young man you have become. You have grown in discipline, discernment, leadership, and most importantly, in your faith. Keep God first as you go out into the world and make your mark. David Bishop Cook. Good job, buddy. John Alva Miller III. That is a mouthful. You know that? Trey, as he is affectionately called, is the son of John and Tina Miller. He's graduating from LaGrange High School and plans to attend Kennesaw State University in the fall. Trey spent years volunteering in our preschool ministry here at Southcrest and has been a big part of our student ministry. He's attended many camps and regularly attends students on Wednesday nights. Trey, your parents have selected this verse for you. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. As you make this transition in your life, your parents have these words for you. Trey, we love you so much and are extremely proud of the man you have become. We can't wait to see everything you accomplish as you begin the next journey in life. We pray that you pursue God's love and will above all the world may set along your path because he wants the best for you. Love mom, dad, Grace, Blake, Cole, and Jace. John Alva Miller III, a.k.a. Trey. Good job, buddy. All right. Jacob Austin Robertson. Jacob is the son of Gene and Tatum Robertson. He is graduating from Harris County High School and will attend Kennesaw State University in the fall where he plans to major in physical therapy. So if Dejan doesn't work out, I got a backup plan, but it's all good. 
Early in high school, Jacob played basketball for the school. His junior and senior years were spent at LaGrange College as a dual enrollment student. And during this time, Jacob could be found at LaGrange College, your pie, the gym, or spending time with his amazing friend group. Jacob regularly serves as a volunteer in our kindergarten room and also attends South Coast students on Wednesday nights. Jacob, your parents have selected these verses for you. Colossians 3, 12 through 17. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So you must also forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. As you make this transition in your life, your parents have these words for you. We are so incredibly proud of the young man you have grown into. You have always been exceptionally intelligent, kind, and hysterically sarcastic. We are beyond proud of you. I know that the Lord has amazing plans for you. Jacob Austin Robertson. Good job, buddy. All right, here we go. Candace Rose Shoger. All right. Candace is mine and Angie's daughter. She's a homeschool graduate and will be attending Kennesaw State University in the fall, majoring in dance with a concentration in ballet. During high school, Candace was a member of the Lafayette Dance Ballet Company, where she also served as a chaplain. She's taken tap, ballet, jazz, contemporary, and point classes, and attended dance intensives with American Ballet Theater, the National Ballet, and Kennesaw State University, where she received a dance scholarship. She also teaches dance and is a trainer at Chick-fil-A on Commerce Avenue. Candace is a troop youth leadership graduate and a dual enrollment student at LaGrange College. Candace volunteers with our preschool ministry and attends Southcrest students on Wednesday nights. Candace is also a founding member of Southcrest LaGrange and has a deep love for the Lord and his church. Candace, your, your mother and I have selected this verse for you. Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. As you make this transition in your life, we have these words for you. We are so proud of you, Rose. You are our favorite second-born daughter, and we praise God for the gift you are to our family. Your bright spirit and love for Jesus, Christmas, and Harry Styles is infectious. You have never backed down from a challenge. You always put others before yourself, and your ability to laugh loudest at your own mistakes will take you far in life. Remember to always keep your eyes on the Lord and never stop sharing your positive attitude wherever you go. And no matter what lies ahead at Kennesaw, remember to only take afternoon classes because you are not a morning person. <laughs> Hootie who, we love you more than you could ever know. Candace Rose Shoger. Love you, baby. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you today for each of these graduates. God, as they begin this new journey in life, God, we thank you for what they've accomplished. God, we thank you for how you've moved in their lives. And God, what I'm most grateful for is that they're here at church. God, that they have lived lives that are centered on you. And God, I pray that if anything else they ever lose in life, that they never lose that connection that they have to you. God, that you would help them, encourage them, and guide them and all that they do. And God, that you would stay faithful to them. God, your name, we pray these things. Amen. Well, again, I am so glad that you guys are here with us this morning. It's been a very special morning. And as I look at all that God has done, how he's moved through life change and baptism, and how he looks at us as we move through life, and, and is so happy for us, it just makes today super special. And before we get too far along, I want to compliment all of you graduates on your drip graduation fit. Really nice, really nice. Um, 
Some of you are about to embark on a new educational journey, while others of you are leaving the academic world and joining the workforce. For those of you joining the workforce, I have to say, welcome to the grind. It doesn't change. <laughs> yes, you'll say that in a few months. Yes, I want to go back to college. I don't want to go, I don't want to grow up. Yes. But no matter what type of graduation, whether leaving kindergarten, high school, or college, it marks a milestone in your life. You see, at graduations, we spend time celebrating what you have done, looking back over years of work to celebrate the completion of this chapter of your lives. You are now educated, and that education is important. G.K. Chesterton once said this, without education, we are in a horrible and deadly danger of taking educated people seriously. And that is so true in our world today. All of us lived through COVID, all the smart people drove us absolutely insane. And so we need our own education to make good choices in our life and to discern what is best for us. But all the education is really for a purpose. And that purpose is to prepare you for that next chapter in your life. And it is here as we approach this next chapter, but I want to help steer you a little bit this morning. You see, our culture tells us stories. Our culture tells us things about our life, and it tells us one of two stories is true about us. One of the stories it tells us is that you are free. You're autonomous. You are get to be who you choose to be. There are no restraints and no limits on what you want to accomplish. And everything that you will do will solely be accomplished by you and you alone. A philosopher once described this way of thinking like this. If a rock could think, and I picked up a rock and threw it across the river, the rock would think that it decided to go across the river all by itself. As you can understand, one, rocks don't think, and the other thing, that's just silliness. Rocks don't do anything on their own. They're done through people. The other story that the world tells us is that you are fixed. Your, your future has been determined before you, that you are a product of your environment, and there's nothing you can do to trap, get out of this unbreakable cycle. In other words, my dad was an underwater basket weaver. My mom was an underwater basket weaver. I will be an underwater basket weaver. What kind of basket would you like? But today, I want to give you a third option. I want to give to you a completely different story than what the world's narrative tells us. And this story comes from Genesis 45, and it's near the ending of the story of Joseph's life. Now, I'm not gonna recount the whole story to you, but I will say that Joseph grew up in a dysfunctional family that probably out-dysfunctions any family you know of or have ever been part of. And at the highlight of this dysfunction, it is when his brothers sell him into slavery to Egyptian traders. And through a series of very interesting events, Joseph lands up at the feet of Pharaoh, but not as a servant. No, Joseph becomes the ruler of all things that happen in Pharaoh's palace. He's in charge of public works. In other words, Joseph got a job in management. And during a great famine, Joseph's brothers, who attempted to kill him and then sold him into slavery, show up in Egypt looking for food. They do not know that the Egyptian official who stands before them, holding their family's life in his hands, the one before whom they grovel for food, is none other than their little brother Joseph, the same kid brother they tried to get rid of earlier. And this is where we come into the story. You see, little brother Joseph reveals himself to his older siblings. And when they realize that this high-powered official standing before them is the brother who they treated so badly, who they tried to kill, who they sold into slavery, they become terrified that he's going to get back at them. It's payback time when little bro gets revenge on what his brothers did to him. Now, this is a part of the story that every younger sibling in life loves to hear because they've been tormented by an older brother or sister and they can't wait for them to get theirs. They're like, yes, it's going to happen. But Joseph didn't do that. Instead, he calms their fears and tells them that though they deserve it, he is not going to get revenge. Rather, he will bless them and give them the food they need. Their family will be preserved. Then Joseph is going to say something to his brothers that we're going to focus on this morning. 
Looking back on what happened through all the twists and turns in life, the weird events and strange coincidences, the heartache, the hurt, Joseph does something unexpected. Chapter 45, verse 4, he starts with this. So Joseph said to his brothers, come near to me, please. And they came near, and he said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me here before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. And here's where we get a surprise. There's another actor in this story. As it turns out, the characters are not limited to Joseph and his brothers and what he did or didn't do to them. There is a third participant without whom the story cannot be fully told, and that participant is God. You see, Joseph's brothers were selfish and couldn't stand their little brother, wanting to get rid of him no matter the cost. Joseph, in all of this, was doing everything he could just to stay alive, just to survive. But God was also busy, making meaning in a story that was not exclusively of Joseph or his brother's doing. So Joseph declares, you meant this for evil, but God meant this for good. See, as modern people, we've been conditioned to describe our lives as mostly what we do or mostly what's been done to us by others. I am the sum of my choices. I am who I am because of my genetics. But but this ancient story dares to insert another character, or should I say an author. See, our lives may not be stories written by us or even by our parents or our genes, because there is a meaning beyond the meaning that we make. There's an author, unseen, but nevertheless always active, and that is God. When Joseph says, you meant this for evil, but God meant this for good, it raises a question. What if our life is not just ours? What if what you're doing today is not a result of the parents' choices in your life? Some of us have taken twists and turns, odd lurches to the left or right. And these simply can't be explained by reference to our psychological makeup or to our background or to our experiences. It's as if someone, something got a hold of us, moved us to some new place not of our choosing. Augustine, the great saint, put it this way. When you look back over your life, the steps you have taken can first appear like chicken tracks in the mud. Little chicken tracks going this way and that in the muddy chicken yard without direction. But through the eyes of faith, sometimes those seemingly purposeless tracks take on a pattern. They take on a direction. We begin to see that they are going somewhere. They suggest the hand of God. And it is then that you realize that the life you're living, the meaning that you mean, is not all that there is. You see, for those of us who follow Jesus, we know that this hand is the hand of God in our lives. We are simply actors in a play, and the playwright is greater than us. We are busy in our lives, meaning this for evil or out of selfish ambition, but God is busy meaning this for good. The most frequently asked question to any graduate, and something you probably will get later today, is what are you doing with yourselves after you graduate? What's going to be happening to you after graduation? But I believe in light of who God is in our lives and what we've talked about already, that this question is really simple and misses the mark completely. A, A more complex, faithful question would be, what do you think God is going to do through you after graduation? How is God going to step into your life and do something in your life? Because this is what Jesus' brother James told us. In James 4, he says this, Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. There's an old theological world, older than I am even, okay? It's an old word. And that word talks about God's hand on our lives. And that word is called providence. All of you have experienced providence in your life. As you go through it, 
You don't know what's happening to you, why it's happening to you. You ask God questions. God, why did you do this? God, what's happening in my life right now? But then 20 years from now, you look back over your life and you see the hand of God. And you realize, hey, if I would have succeeded at this, I wouldn't have met this person. Hey, if I would have done this, I would have moved there. I never would have been able to do this. And you see God's hand weaving this tapestry that's called your life slowly. Now, if it was up to God, it'd be a straight line. But he allows us to make mistakes. He allows us to learn from our failures. And so his hand comes back in to push us back on track, to push it back on track. Kind of like teaching your kid to ride a bike. Any of you ever do that? I failed at it miserably, okay? Angie taught our kids to ride bikes. I tried for like three days. I lost like 17 pounds running after kids, and, and constantly, you're like, no, this way, no, this way, no, this way. And they would cry the entire time I taught them how to ride backs. Angie went out there for 37 seconds. Hey, sweetie, here's how you do it. And they're off the road, never come back. Well, hopefully never come back. Here they are, they're still here. But, you know, maybe we'll get rid of them finally. But that's what happens in life. And God says, hey, no, no, back this way, back this way. Let me put you back on track. So today, while you're busy making our choices and decisions, God will also be busy weaving and creating something good out of your lives. Now, that can seem like a lot of pressure. Like, hey, I don't want to fail God. I don't want to make the wrong choice. But allow me to take that pressure off of you today. When you look back over your life and you're looking back over and looking at that hand of God in your life, I want you to take one word completely out of that equation and that word is success. Take that word out of the equation when you look back over your life. Was I successful or not? C.S. Lewis puts it this way. It is not your business to succeed. Graduates, let me read that one more time. It is not your business to succeed. Parents in this room, it is not your business to succeed. Everybody else, just in case I missed you, guess what? It is not your business to succeed. But to do right. When you have done so, the rest lies with God. You follow God in your life, everything else will be taken care of by him. Let's be real. I'm an idiot. If I made all the choices in my life, I'd probably be in the grave right now. But before me goes God. And God intervenes. And God steps in. And that hand of God was like, what a a dummy. Back here. Oh, back here. Back here. And that's what God does in our lives. Keep your eyes on Jesus moving forward, graduates. Always remember that God is with you. He goes before you. Our former mayor, Jim Thornton, was was given the commencement address yesterday at LaGrange College, said something that was so important. You go nowhere that God has not already been there. God has already been to your future. He's already prepared the place for you to go. You're not going there alone because he's waiting on you to get there. He is there for us and with us. The life you live is not exclusively your own, but it's yours through Christ. God has done great things through you. He's given you great gifts. And God's gonna do far, far, much greater things through you if you'll just follow after him and do what is right.